hello logan here and i'm joined by apps and we're here to talk uncharted the lost legacy review hello apps hi yeah how are we doing yes not too bad thanks yourself yeah not too bad right let's uh let's get into this probably one that i have been quite intrigued about um i haven't actually picked it up yet and i've been quite ignorant to it but i've been quite eager to understand what you adkins and a few others have thought of this game um as far i'll tell you what i know first about it so yeah uncharted 4 come out we went yep great we all yep. played it loved it loved and it. it all went a little bit quiet didn't it or mm-hmm. it seemed to and then they announced this dlc mm-hmm. and then they announced that it was going to be standalone yes so this is where we are it's now been released it's been out for a couple of days now in the uk and you have picked it up and played through it yes correct. so i guess the first question is that people will be thinking if it's dlc does it carry on from where four left off so it's a standalone piece um you will not need to have Uncharted 4 because it's completely on its own for one start so from a technical point of view you can just pick this up on its own so you don't need to have even played Uncharted 4 to, to play this story wise um, one thing that I would perhaps criticise it for perhaps unfairly is that I believe that this relies a lot more on playing the, Unchar- the old Uncharted games than what 4 did I felt like you jumped into 4 you kind of understood what was going on it was a really good way of kind of introducing new um, people to the series and also catering to the old older players that have played through one to three i feel like the lost legacy it relies on you playing you know uncharted two and three and even four in some cases because the lead um is a lady known as chloe fraser who pops up in uncharted two and three so to get to know her through those games definitely helped me um, in this, and I think if you when you if you jump in without having a kind of background on what she's like or what she's about, you might not resonate with her uh, as much as what I probably did or someone who played two and three. That that's interesting because I didn't expect them to do that. It seems odd to go from yep. a character they've used in previous iterations and then after the latest one, which if I remember rightly, she wasn't involved in at no. all. Just I don't remember radar. that character name and then all of a sudden this sort of DLC which it, it is DLC mm. has come out and harks back to the original ones which for me is a bit of a disappointment in a way because I haven't played the original one Chides 1, 2 and 3 yeah. then I probably should do but you're not going to because <sighs> one, you can't go back you simply can't go back to the the the, uh, the, the original 3 because you've played 4 and they mm. brought the series so far forward you go back and you're you'll struggle um one thing that i did is because I, I i played one to three a long time ago um I, I couldn't really remember who or what chloe was so i actually went back and watched a few youtube like game movies with the scenes that she was in just to get an idea a flavor of what she was like and then once i started watching them i kind of she flooded back but she's a very popular character amongst those that have played um two and three so people were, were pleased to see her back if if you're fresh off the boat, you're gonna you know you're not gonna have that kind of history with her, so you might, as I said, struggle a little bit with it. Um, it's also got Nadine Ross in it, who was in four, so she was actually one of the antagonists. She was the uh, yes. she was running Shoreline, the mercenary group, and it's a really interesting dynamic between those two because, you know, if you look at if you look at Chloe previously, she was kind of on the good side, whereas in four, Nadine was quite clearly on the bad side so it's quite interesting how they kind of come together and they go through the backstory of what you know that they're doing together and and whether they can work together in a, in a kind of uneasy alliance I guess okay so for me when I played Uncharted the big thing that resonated was the story obviously the game pairing was fantastic but it was very story heavy I, I felt like I was playing through a film yeah. so obviously I don't this isn't a full title it's Mm -hmm. not something that we expect to have a fully fledged deep backstory rich storyline in it but how does it stack up naturally against uncharted 4 in that respect yeah i mean uncharted 4 for me was had so many layers to it and its story that it's the reason why it got a platinum was because it was just in that case in that area was was really really strong the lost legacy is very strong still 
Um, Chloe is a, is a great character in my view. Um, so it kind of gives her a little bit more personality and again builds on her backstory about how perhaps she got into this whole treasure hunting lark. And also I felt like the only thing I would criticise 4-4 four, four, um, in or Thief's Den, I should say four, a Thief's Den, not 4-4 four, because four, that's not good English. <laughs> only thing I'd criticise a Thief's N for um, is Nadine was probably one of the only characters that kind of just disappeared and didn't have much of a backstory whereas in The Lost Legacy you find out a lot more about her so it's nice to have that finally it's nice to finally get a little bit more information about Nadine kind of know who she is as a character um, I felt she was a little bit underused in, in The Thief's End so it's great to have her back and, and find out a lot more about her and it's still got the Naughty Dog kind of stamp of quality here the, the voice acting the, the, the story's great, the, the presentation's all there, so all the bells and whistles that you'd expect from a, a fully-fledged Uncharted game is here, it's just a little bit shorter, perhaps, than uh, than what A Thief's End was. Yeah, so do you feel that this is here to either move the story on, or do you feel like it's a story that they just wanted to tell, or something that they wanted to do, perhaps, in Uncharted 4, that they, they just couldn't fit in? Yeah, what my view is that they committed to doing a story DLC or a story add-on or a story expansion or whatever you want to call it and they didn't really know what to do with it and they came up with this on the fly almost because my understanding is that they were considering having um, you know, some story perhaps involved with Sully or perhaps Sam Drake as a prequel, something like that and, and then they settled on this. So it certainly serves as, you know, we, we know you loved Uncharted 4. Um, here is another taste of that style of game just with different characters a different story um, so if you enjoyed playing that you, you're probably going to enjoy playing The Lost Legacy so I think it, what we're saying is is more of the same but that's not necessarily a bad thing no no not at all and they have done some kind of minor well, not minor actually quite a major change like there is one section of the game which is almost open world and when I say open world I don't mean there's um, like GTA, there's a living city there. There's an area of the map which is rather large, larger than what I remember in A Thief's End. Um, and essentially, you, you've got three or four different objectives to complete, and you can go off and do them in any order. So you, mm. can, you can go and do objective two first, you can go and do objective one first, you can go and do objective three first. And there's even an optional little side quest that kind of you know, goes through a little mini story almost that you can you can go off and complete and, and get a reward for. So that in itself was a quite a, a departure from some of the more linear pieces in A Thief's End. I know we had the, the Jeep and driving around, but from my memory, um, it was quite linear. You had to go down a set path eventually. There was a bit of exploring, whereas this is like a full location you can go off and do. And you mm. can spend a good few hours just in that section. And then, obviously, once you get past that area, you're back to the linear... Um, open areas that you can have combat and, and go through the story with but I thought it was a nice little change a nice little kind of perhaps a, a glimpse into what the future might hold for this franchise should it should it continue mm. that's interesting because I, one thing I liked was how linear it was mm. in Uncharted 4 I didn't uh, sometimes I get a bit lost in games where they're meant to be linear and yeah. you sort of lose a bit of direction I think with, uh, with having that open world <clears throat> element to it so that would be interesting to see where they take that if they do decide to explore that. Maybe they just thought they'd chuck that out there just to, as you say, just as a taste of what it could be like and see how it goes down. But yeah. uh, I, w I wouldn't worry about getting lost in that section. Like I said, it is a <clears throat> so probably a couple of hours at most that you can spend in there. And they do a really good job with the map, sort of letting you know where you are on the map and where mm. things are. So it clearly marks out where you would need to go to do the, you know, the free objectives and the optional one. So... Um, absolutely won't get lost um, it just gives you a little bit more flexibility and if you want to explore the you know the area you, you can do it your, your your kind of your free will mm. so I guess the last question for you would be is this you know another 8 9 out of 10 game or for what it is or is there a gaping chasm of disappointment somewhere that you're you haven't yet let on no I don't think there is I'm, I'm, I mean I, I kind of unfairly I'm desensitised to how good Naughty Dog have been in the mm. last kind of four years and I take for granted just how good the titles they put out are 
I just expect it of them. And then when they deliver, I go, okay, you've, ex- you've delivered yeah. upon expectation. So it's difficult for me to sit here and be like, oh, it blew me away or whatever, because I'm just on that in that mindset of them. Look, you've got the set pieces there. You've got some great puzzles. It's around 8.5 hours in length. That's how long it took me. You can take longer or shorter, you know, just trim off or add a, an hour here or there. It mm. comes with the full multiplayer suite as well. So if you, you missed out on that with a fee and you haven't got it, you can pick up the Lost Legacy and play through that. Um, it's a retail release as well, which I think is a bit of a plus because if you, if you are done with it after the eight hours, you can trade it in. You know, a lot of the time, the DLC, which is what we've kind of labelled it as here, you can't. You, you buy it and that's it. It's on your hard drive. It's stuck. This is a retail release, so you can go out and pick that up. Um, the only, like I said, the only real criticisms I have of it are that, that it, it relies on playing the, the old Uncharted games, two and three in particular, um, so you can get a bit of a backstory with Chloe. You can get away with it, but I feel like you lose a, a part of the game, which I don't feel was present in A Thief's End. So how much is this... DLC then is it more or less than you'd expect to pay for it uh, it's, about, it's about right I think um, I think it's retailing like it's RRP is twenty nine ninety nine. so we know shave 5 to £10 off that in the stores because no one charges full RRP for games you look at a full release game it's uh, forty nine ninety nine UK pounds. So typically, you pick f- pick them up for forty pounds. This is lurking at around the twenty five to twenty two mark. You know, twenty pound if you're lucky. And yeah, it's good value for that. For what it is, you don't get many twenty pound games that have as high quality as this. Um, I can't really fault it on the on the price point. I think it's priced about right. And like I mentioned earlier, it comes with the multiplayer as well, which I think is a boost for those that that are sniffing around that. I was going to say I didn't know that and I think that's a really good addition. I played some of the uh, multiplayer when Uncharted 4 came out and it's actually brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good yeah. fun. So uh, even if you're just sniffing around that, it's definitely worth getting. I mean, you can probably pick up Uncharted 4 for a similar price now anyway. <laughs> but... thing, yeah. If you haven't played that, go get <laughs> Uncharted 4, obviously. But for those that have played 4 and perhaps traded it or don't have access to it anymore, mm. it's great because it even carries over your... Uh, your progress from the multiplayer so if you have played a little bit of it before all your skins and stuff will just you know seamlessly drop into the lost legacy version it's a seamless multiplayer world it seems it's no it's no difference it's just that it's on the it, it's it's accessible via the lost legacy good stuff it all sounds like good stuff to me it sounds really positive but uh i suppose the thing that all the all the listeners and the viewers are, are waiting for is it is it a buy it or is it a bin it fucking buy it and there it is. So you'd buy it, but where does it grade in the structure? Where do you put it? Does it's... it meet that platinum from Uncharted 4? That is the question. That, that... Mm, I don't think so, because Uncharted 4's story, for one, had the layer upon the, had the, had the multiple layers that I spoke about earlier of how all the different kind of areas it was tackling. And I felt that was really well done. Um, so on that front, it kind of doesn't quite live up to that standard. And also, I do feel like having Chloe in there <clears throat> is a bit of a stinger to people that hadn't played 2 and 3 particularly. Um, it certainly won't ruin the game, but to get the most out of it, um, you will uh, you would want to know what Chloe's about, really, because you kind of... You know, you want to know her personality, I guess, before you start spending eight and a half hours of her. You will get to know her throughout the game, but if you have that base foundation, you're laughing, really. And I feel like when you put that kind of foundation in there, or that expectation, it's difficult for newer players to get as much satisfaction out of it. I guess another thing to mention as well is that you don't get the globe shot and adventure of some of the past Uncharted games, um, and you're kind of you know you're stuck in one environment for most of the game so that's another thing that i kind of was a little bit disappointed in. you don't get much variety in your locations but it all looks stunning so it's not it's not a major problem but i would have liked maybe a couple more different environments to to roar around in um it's going to be an official grading of gold right so there you go another solid entry by the sounds of it from naughty dog Late have got a platinum as a gold so they're, they're, uh, crap, they're, mate, them naughty dog. They're overrated, I'll tell you that much. Well, the trouble is you come to expect it, and then you get yeah. to this, and you go, ah, it's just a gold. You go, well, yeah. anything else that gets that, you're laughing. So. Yeah, very, very strong game. Like, Great, great game to pick up for 20, 25 UK pounds, certainly, and done a good job, so well done. Dip digital seal of approval has been given. 
So there you go. I think that's all we've got. So thanks a lot for joining me, Apps. No problems. Right, we'll speak to you next time. Ta da! You don't like anything. Oh, thank you. I'm slipping. You know that treasure hunting is not at the risk of us, right? Now there's being a mercenary. You too. Partners. And hello, gorgeous. What a pleasant surprise. You want the tusk? You need my help. A thief? Collector of antiquities. A parasite who exploits our struggle in order to fatten her pockets. So that's a no. Felt like a no. I must admit, you are quite the schemer. You were going to sell me out, weren't you? Or history with the Saab made you the obvious choice. You lie to my face. Cards on the table. I need your help. And if you want the tusk, you need mine. It's a limpid can't change your spots. You know nothing about me. I'm a casualty of war. Don't!